Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another fresh box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box number 99, and the name is... Neun und Neunzig. While this box is numbered 99, Hacker Boxes actually started on number zero back in 2015. So technically, this is their 100th box, and is reason to celebrate. And I hope that Hacker Boxes has much success and keeps throwing boxes out there for many years to come. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. First, we've got a black Wii nunchuck style controller here. That's pretty cool. Been a while since I've messed with one of these, but looks like it's pretty okay there. Next, we have here the micro SD USB interface module. Looks like this is the main piece of the project here. This is the ESP32-2432-S028R development board, also known, thankfully, as the CYD, or Cheap Yellow Display. This is based on an ESP-WROOM32 dual core MCU, 240MHz clock, 4MB flash, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth wireless, a full color 2.8 inch display, stylus and touchscreen. This is the breakout module for the Wii Nunchuck. This will let us connect the Nunchuck up to the cheap yellow display. This is the micro SD sniffer module. Kind of breaks out the pins that are used for the micro SD reader. This is the acrylic enclosure kit for the cheap yellow display. And wow, check this out. This is the exclusive Hackerbox 99 challenge coin. Now this thing's got some heft to it. Very cool. Oh, check out the back there. Very neat. This is a really neat thing to have included. This is gonna be fun to keep. Very nice. Here we've got a 16 gig micro SD memory card. This is the Pirate Bay parody sticker. That's pretty fun. And last but not least, we've got the Hackerbox 99 collectible reference card with info about the Wii Nunchuck pinouts and the SD sniffer pinouts there, as well as some information there about the cheap yellow display on the back. Very cool. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Did you know you can get custom PCBs made starting at only $5? Check out the project section of the PCBWay site. It is a community for electronics enthusiasts to share projects, ideas, and inspiration. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, you'll find something to spark your creativity. Browse thousands of projects, from simple LED circuits to complex rocket flight controllers. Maybe one day you can even share your own project. Let PCBWay help bring your electronics dreams to life. Just like they always do, the folks from Hacker Boxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. And even if you didn't get this hacker box, I would say go check it out. It's got a lot of good tips and tricks for some of the hardware that's in here. So even if you don't have the hacker box, you might find it pretty handy. Now let's have a little bit of fun with this cheap yellow display. And I'll put a little blip in here from Mr. Brian Locke. Sorry if I got that last name wrong. And let's hear what he has to say. This is currently my favorite device to build projects with. Everything you need is built into this one package, so it's really easy to use. It is cheap, yellow, and since its actual name is something you will never remember, I propose we call it the Cheap Yellow Display, or CYD for short. And Brian noticed that the documentation was kind of lacking for this particular device, so he's gone out and has a great GitHub page where he's kind of brought everything together, put good pointers, a lot of great examples of code and projects you can do with this. It's just really great. And I'll have a link to his YouTube channel, his video, and this GitHub in there. And I think it's in the Instructable as well. Okay, so let's get this thing out and get it on the bench and check it out. Now to connect this up to your computer, you're gonna need a micro B type USB cable. One is not included, but you'll need to go through your stash to get one of those. And the Instructable tells us that when you power it up, by default, what it's gonna do is show a basic test screen and once we see that, we kind of confirm the basic health of the CYD. It's got a few cool little things built into this little basic demo. You can poke around and click and drag and all that. Kind of confirms, like I said, the basic operation of the device. 
and it's got this cool little uh, frames per second and CPU thing there in the bottom right hand of the screen. So the next instructions and the instructable tell us to go over to Brian's GitHub page and check out his setup and configuration page for the details we need to set up our Arduino IDE. And he says we can just set it up as a generic ESP32 dev module, which I do here. And then I also go and confirm my port. In my case, it's detected as this, but your case may vary. And then what we need to do is he says we need to go get the TFT ESPI library, but you'll see here I've already got it installed. But if you search in this way and you don't have it, all you have to do is click the install button and you'll get it. Then after we get that, we need to go take his version of the user underscore setup dot H header file. And we're going to take that, download it from his GitHub and then drag and drop it into the library's TFT ESPI folder under Arduino. And I have an existing one in there, so I'm just going to back that up. And then I put this one in there for this. So next, the Instructable recommends that we check out the Hello World sketch over on the GitHub from earlier. So we grab that and notice it also has a platformio.ini file. So download both of those. When I first open up the sketch file itself, it prompts to make a folder. So I say yes to that. And then I come back and grab and paste in that platform I and I into that same folder and I had a little weirdness with the download. So you'll see here at paste in and I had to rename it to take the two off of that. But then we compile and push the code and this is what we get. I'll pull the power back out and plug it back in so you can see exactly how it boots up with that code. Basically just says, hello world. Next, the instructable gives some steps and uh, illustration here of how to put the acrylic enclosure around the cheap yellow board. So you can see here, got the picture, got some steps and just some common sense and run through that and put this case on here. Ends up looking pretty good. The next instructions we have to follow are all about wiring up the Wii Nunchuck breakout module so it can connect to the Wii Nunchuck controller. And we're gonna follow this picture here basically. And even though I think in our case the colors do match, it says basically to really focus on the positioning instead of the colors in case they're different. So I just followed along with that and wired it up. As I continued on with the instructable, we see the next steps here are to get the Tetris with Nunchuck sketch, as well as this Nintendo extension control library. I got the sketch before the library, but I really don't think that matters. Once I got that installed and compiled and sent to the controller, I was ready to give it a shot. So as you can see here, when I first booted it up, it says no Nunchuck detected because I didn't have it plugged in. So I looked at the controller and I looked at the board here and you can see how it's got two on the one side, on the other side it's got three. So I just made sure that that matched up with how I inserted it into the controller. And then I was off to the races and ready to play a little Tetris. And I did that for quite a bit. The controls are a little bit touchy, but it seemed to work just fine, which is a nice demonstration and shows how cool of a little gaming device this could end up being. In fact, if uh, time allowed, but I don't want this to be a super long video, I would love to do a, the project that's similar to this one, which puts some old classic arcade emulation onto this type device. And in some cases, even like I'll show here, some folks have made little laser cut arcade miniature cabinets for it. And I think that would be really cool to try. And I may try to do that sooner or later. If that's something you'd like to see a dedicated video about, let me know. Next, as we follow along with the instructable, we're gonna go through making a slideshow that can read JPEG images off of the SD card. First, we need to go get this slideshow sketch and then we're gonna go and get several of these libraries that I'll list here. And I'm just gonna show as I knock out and get each one of these libraries. After the libraries are installed, we will go ahead here and compile the sketch and push it over to the cheap yellow display. After the compilation of the sketch is completed, we're gonna take this SD card that was supplied and place it into the SD USB adapter there and put it into the PC and copy a few example JPEGs over to it. After that, we're gonna place the SD card into the cheap yellow display, power it on, and the slideshow application should start running. And as you can see here, when you tap on the stylus, you can see it go through the different images. So that looks like it works as expected.
The last thing we have in the Instructable here is this SD sniffer board. Now its original, I guess, intent really is to give you a way to inspect and look at traffic as something is reading or writing to an SD card. And our hacker box here though, it's more of a way to break out four additional IO ports in addition to the four that are present that we can access from the cheap yellow board. And as you can see here, I really didn't do much with it here. I just went ahead and soldered these headers in and had it ready for a time when I should ever need to use it. At the time of recording this video, there look to be some of these still in stock if you're interested in this actual hacker box. If this one doesn't interest you, check out their other stuff. They may have something that you might want to get. Also, wanted to take another chance to say congrats to hacker boxes on their 100th box, number 99. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.